Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Poly Podcast. The well, we try to be bi weekly podcast, but you know, kind of given everything that's going on right now, we're uh, doing this whenever we can. Um, but this is the official podcast of the Poly Post, the student ran paper of Cal Poly Pomona. I'm, of course, your co host, Nick Salamante, and joining me is I am your other co host, uh, Andy Foreman. And today we are joined by two very special guests. Nick, if you want to introduce the first one. That's right. We are joined with feature editor, Daniela Avila. And we are also joined by the editor-in-chief herself, Elizabeth Hernandez. What's up, guys? How are you doing? Hey, guys. Thanks for having us. Hi. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. I know it's super difficult, um, you know, to travel all the way out here on Zoom and to be, you know, with us. So we thank you for, you know, your sacrifice and the journey you had made to get here. And for the battery life of your phones that you're using to be here right now. (laughs) Honestly, great sacrifices. But of course, that's what the top editors are there for. All right. That's that's what it takes to be big dogs like these guys. So now that we have you guys here, uh, later in the show, we're actually going to get into your guys' experience uh, with this whole quarantine situation. And, you know, I'm really excited to get the editor's, like, perspective on this. You know, we've had a few guests on from other students, but it's nice to get the actual editors and to get a little behind the scenes on, like, what that process is like and how that's been affected by this whole quarantine situation. Um, But before we jump into that, we're going to go ahead and quickly run through some of the top stories of the paper. This is going to be our current issue, issue 28 of the PolyPost. Now, normally we would say you could find these anywhere around campus in the uh, green bins. They're free to pick up. However, obviously, no one's really on campus, but you can always go to the Poly Post website and pick up a PDF and read the whole newspaper there. So you have no excuse. You can check out the news. So the very first story we're going to cover, guys, is going to be CPP receives roughly $31 million from the CARES Act. And this is going to be by our staff writer, Zavani Macias. Uh, and CSU provided $500 in emergency grants for students. So if you want to learn more about that and how the school has kind of divvied up that money and received it from CSU, be sure to check out that story. For the grant, um, it's uh, like it's like this thing you have to apply for. So it's um, kind of like more on the student side to like reach out. Um, I'm not sure how long it actually takes for the money to get um, like from the like initial application back to the student after it's been reviewed and all that. But I do know that before like this is kind of like common sense but like before this whole pandemic thing like there wasn't that many students reaching out and like that many students that even knew about the 500 hundred dollar grant mm-hmm. um but i think like it's like closer to like over like 300 students like applied for the grant in march or something like that oh wow i mean if they're just giving away money you know i'm broke i need that money it's almost enough to cover parking for a semester. <laughs> almost, almost enough. But of course, it's it's never enough. In fact, they're still uh, hounding me for my leg and my firstborn child for parking. But you know, they'll never get out of me. That's all I gotta tell them. And then the next story we wanna cover is gonna be in arts and entertainment. This is actually gonna be Daniela's section. Uh, small local businesses to support during safe at home order. And this is gonna be by Lauren Bruno, who's our staff writer here. So if you're in the local area of, you know, Pomona you're near the school and there are just some businesses you want to you know pick up from while everybody's cooped up at home Uh, Lauren has a great story you can check out to see some of those recommendations then we have our opinion section this is actually Liz's section so in addition to being the uh, editor-in-chief she's also the uh, head of the opinion section and this is by our very own uh, Andy Foreman how to find creative inspiration at home. This is a great piece. Um, I encourage everybody, especially everyone in, you know, that's listening who's a more creative type, to check this one out. Andy gives some great recommendations on how to just kind of stay focused, stay within your artistic groove. So very, very great job, my friend. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Of course. And then finally, for our sports section, um, the top story is going to be coronavirus's impact on spring coaches. And this is going to be by our staff writers, Alexandra Wilder and Christian Moya. Uh, and this is just kind of giving the you know, coaches perspective. Everyone's been affected, especially the sports teams uh, this season, with this whole coronavirus situation. And we're actually going to be getting into uh, an athlete's perspective later on with uh, Liz, who herself is an athlete here at Cal Poly. So we'll be getting into that a little bit. But before we move on, just overall, how have you guys been? How have you been holding up with this whole coronavirus situation? Uh, Liz, you go first. (laughs) Um, Well, it's definitely, like, completely, like, deconstructed my 
usual like day in the life. Like I should be at school right now working on the newspaper, um, but instead I'm home and um, it's just weird like being able to sleep in. Like I've definitely caught up on a lot of sleep um, <laughs> and I'm cooking a lot more. So I'm like running out of food a lot more. So I have to go to the grocery store a lot more, which in itself is like its own trek. So there are definitely a lot of changes. Um, there's been like in a weird way, like this whole pandemic kind of had some benefits for me, like for my job on campus, I was actually able to like pick up more work hours. And like, I'm basically like full-time, part-time now. And before this happened, I was only working six hours a week and I'm working 19. Oh, wow. So that is super helpful. Um, but other than that, like kind of like everyone else, like trying to figure out how to stay busy and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Dana? Um, for me, I would have to say that it was really difficult for me at first because I personally am a really social person and I'm used to being around people all the time. Like I'm on campus Monday through Friday, pretty much all day long. And that entire time I'm with people. And so at first it was really hard, but then now that I'm home and I've kind of like settled down, it's really not that bad. You know, like yeah. I've gotten really productive uh, in my time here that I've been at home and like I've been doing a lot of reading, uh, which is something that I used to do a lot back in high school, but then I never had time to do because I was just so caught up with everything else in life. And yeah, overall it's just made me like a really productive person. And like Liz said, I'm catching up on sleep as well. And I feel like every time I'm in school, you know, like I'm probably sleeping less than five hours each oh, yeah. day. And so I'm just not really myself, you know? And so I'm feeling good. I'm glad, you know, I'm really glad to hear that, that you guys are, you know, actually catching up on sleep. I, I think me and Andy were talking about this before, how it's kind of a weird silver lining uh, to this whole situation. Like there's a lot wrong and a lot bad going on right now, but you know, there's also some positives. Like I think across the board, everyone's actually sleeping. Everyone's actually on a you know healthy sleep cycle for once instead of just being up in crackhead hours like every single day and then going to school. I mean, a lot of us are up during crackhead hours because I don't go to sleep till like four in the morning. We for sure are because I, I need to set an alarm so that I won't wake up at 11 p.m. every day. <laughs> well, I sleep till like two in the afternoon. No. Well, well some of us are getting, you know, a, a normal sleep schedule, but at least we're sleeping, you know? <laughs> Some of us, yeah. I'm used to being up at 6 a.m. every day, so like when I mentioned I sleep in, I meant I wake up at 8. I'm the same oh. way, I'm the same way. I've been like oh, setting my alarm to get up at 6, and then like when I'm like treating myself, I like get up at like 8 or 9, and I'm just like, yeah, oh, man, I've slept the day away. Stop. How nice is it though that we can be in control of our own lives like that? You know, like if you want to sleep all day, ah, aside from your Zoom classes, but. You know, I bet a lot of people just, they're shutting off their screen, they're putting it on mute, and they take naps during their Zooms. I've heard of a lot of people doing that. Oh, yeah. I, I am a lot of people. <laughs> Dude, if you look at the Zoom meetings, though, like the Zoom classes, how many people there are, like, not showing their video? And I'm like, yes. there's, there's, like, three people that actually showed up today and a few people who just set up their laptops. I mean, we yeah. literally talked about this last week. I am those people. I put it on mute, I turn off my camera, and that's it. You know, yeah. I am there in spirit, and that's that's. Just, <laughs> yeah, once my professor like gives us the assignment for the day, we just like set up our Google Doc and like leave the classroom and do it, turn it in, and that's class. See? There oh you yeah, go. I think I think we all want to pretend that you know that we're like really listening attentively, but a lot of us are sitting at home on our beds, and you know, like it's really hard. Honestly, I just hit mute and then I turn on Netflix. <laughs> I was actually going to participate in class today, but I didn't know that there was like a feature on Zoom where you could like raise your hand. So I was about to type it in the chat, but then some girl raised her hand and she said literally exactly what I was going to say. And I was like, do I put it in the chat anyways? Like, does it even matter? Like, is participation being counted like at all? <laughs> I mean, so look, the fact I just didn't say anything. The fact that you showed up should be enough. That's it. <laughs> you see my name in the chat, dog. You know I'm here. Okay. 
hey, you know what, that's, that's what, that's also rough about, like, participation points now, like, uh, for one of my classes, you know, like, we have to do everything through Slack, and so, personally, I'm the type of person that kind of just speaks, you know, like, when I have an idea, I speak it, when I have my input, I speak it, but when it comes down to me typing it, I really, like, sit there, and I think about it for a long time, and then I'm like, you know what, no, and it's just not the same, you know? No, because I'm in, I'm in that uh, Slack class, and, like, I <laughs> You know, when I do show up, I feel I feel stupid. Like I'm the same way. Where like if I just raise my hand and like say something in class, I'm just like, okay, I throw it out in the ether, or, like kind of think through it as I'm going. But like when I'm typing it, I get self conscious and I look at it and I'm like, that's a dumb question. That's a really yeah, dumb me question. too. <laughs> yeah, we're no longer living in the moment. Yeah. Well, because time has no meaning anymore. Because like I, I was thinking about it, like we or before we even started recording, we were talking about like, oh, when did this assignment? get put on blackboard or whatever i'm like i think it was last week but i don't even know if that was last week because there's no weekends anymore so it's all just blended together i don't remember anything could have been last week could have been three weeks ago same difference yeah it really doesn't matter at this point dude don't yeah. even get me started i've been like trying to write down like a schedule and like follow that because i've lost all sense of like time. my perception of time is gone it's all one day it just melts together. So like when you're like, oh, you know, was that assignment due this week or last week? I'm like, that's that's actually me. That's actually a problem. I looked up and I was three weeks behind a project because <laughs> I just didn't know we got it assigned it. Yep. Just out the loop. <laughs> that being said, uh, the reason why we brought you guys on here is we wanted to go ahead and get your guys's like perspective as an editor and just wonder how has the coronavirus and this whole uh, online situation as far as the campus go how's that affected you guys's like work as the editors how has that changed the process of the polypost itself uh you want to go first you want me to go first uh you could go okay so uh personally as an editor and working in the polypost it's changed a lot and I think more than people could even imagine, you know, because like uh, aside from all the work that we do throughout the week, we always get together on Sundays and we're always in the poly post and we're working together, you know, we're working all day long. It's probably like 12 consecutive hours and we're all kind of just sitting there and we're messing around together and it's actually like really fun, you know, in the beginning it feels like a lot and it's really overwhelming, but I think that has been one of the biggest things that's been rough for me because I didn't realize that it was going to be taken away from me. And it was, you know, like I, right now I'm back home, I'm three and a half hours away and I'm doing it all virtually. And so, you know, I'm getting the job done, but it's just not as fun anymore, you know, because I'm used to having like all the other editors around me and we built like this huge friendship and they're all seniors, you know? And so next year, um, I'm going to start with my new editors, but yeah, I grew, there's a really big bond between all of us and, you know, on the work side of it, it really hasn't been that bad, but I just feel like everything we're doing revolves around on the coronavirus. You know what I mean? Especially in A&E, uh, we're about like lifestyle and entertainment, but right now, um, entertainment's gone. You know what I mean? Aside from everything that aside from everything that's online, we've kind of just made like this huge shift. And so uh, everything that's inside my section has also taken a huge shift. You know what I mean? Now we're all about like living with the coronavirus, what entertainment is with the coronavirus. And, you know, I never, I had all these ideas for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. And so now that can't, now that can't really happen. And it's, it's not that bad, but it's just taking a lot of adjusting. I mean, I figure, right, like, it, the coronavirus has just completely dominate the news cycle, so I can imagine, yeah. like, all of your other plans, and I can, you know, sp at least speaking for myself, and I'm sure, Andy, you might feel the same way, because, you know, we write for you a lot in the uh, A&E section. Um, it's, it's hard. It's hard to come up with something that's, like, not related to the coronavirus, and, like, the coronavirus is important. It's, you know, it's obviously what is going on in the world right now, but it's very hard to get away from it to not be so focused on it. So I can only imagine, like, as the editor, like, getting derailed and just, you know, dominated by this one topic, like how frustrating that can be. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it just, it seems like we can't really escape it. You know what I mean? And I want nothing more than to escape it. Like I want people, um, I want people when they're reading my section to feel, you know, like to feel like there's some, to feel like they're escaping reality and they're just completely involved in the writing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, and so I've, 
try to take like a positive outlook into every story that uh, gets published into the section. And so that's why we're doing so much on like reading and music and TV shows and that kind of thing. I am, I just want to keep the readers entertained. I mean, if it weren't for the coronavirus, I would probably be reviewing the new season of 90 Day Fiance right now. Oh. oh I am hooked, <laughs> hooked on this new season, but there's no room for it anymore because who, you, you know, even as hilarious as this new season is and as much of a hero as some of these crazy people on the show are, it's kind of like, it seems like a moot point with the coronavirus. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, a lot of people are talking about Too Hot to Handle. I haven't and watched that yet. I, I what haven't. is that? Because I see that in my recommendation. I'm just like, I don't know about this. Yeah, me either. Every time I see the previews on Netflix, I'm like, uh, maybe tomorrow. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe tomorrow. tomorrow. I'm like, I don't know if I got time, Netflix. <laughs> yeah. Busy. Can't. I'm busy. You know, of course, <laughs> you've got me doing a whole lot. <laughs> I mess up sometimes. I still hit people like that, uh, like hit people with that. Uh, when they're like they're texting me i'm just like oh, i'm sorry dog i'm busy they're like well what and i'm like I, I, yo i got things to do i'll be back no I'm yeah that's, that's actually a really big thing like i saw um there was a story written about that um on the cut which is like a little off section of vogue and i wanted to do something about that on this week's budget but I just haven't found like the right angle to it, but it's basically like excuse making while in quarantine because sometimes you're on FaceTime, <laughs> FaceTime chats with people and yeah. you're like, oh God, like I got to get out of here. But like now you can't say like, oh, you know, like I had prior commitments with this and that because like, what are you doing? You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah. And if your crush is taking more than five hours to text you back, he doesn't want to talk because he's in quarantine and you know he's not doing anything else <laughs> look look if your man's like doesn't you know hit you back within the hour he's cheating for sure i'm sorry that's it i don't know <laughs> or how he's cheating. Video games. true i mean look that's me that's me i'm like i'm actually just like doing something else uh but like for everybody else out there you're seeing them they're definitely cheating i'm sorry to tell you i don't know how they're doing it without breaking social distancing but they're doing it just know that tinder has been weird with the whole okay. quarantine thing. How is that, my friend? Because you're, <laughs> you're on Tinder right now. Uh, oh, yes. Real quick, and we will get to uh, Elizabeth and all the craziness, uh, you know, as the editor-in-chief, you know, mm. that this uh, situation has brought us. But the more important thing, honestly, Andy, how has Tinder been affected by this? How has your love life been affected by this, my dude? Well, I mean, it's pretty weird because I get, like, a ton of matches now because I think everyone is just swiping right on everybody because it's so freaking bored, <laughs> which is what I did from the beginning. Like, you know, you just cast a wide net and you just see who you get. But, like, can I, can I tell you guys one, like, kind of funny story that happened on Tinder? And this is actually, like, beneficial. The quarantine helped me. So, like, I've been, I was, like, uh, you know, I got this one girl on Snapchat, and, you know, we were flirting, like, kind of, you know, hot and heavy and everything. She would message me, and she, like, she, it's, it's nothing, like, that bad or anything, but she would message me, like, she's, like, in bed right now, wish you were here with me, like, with, Where like, else you at? with, like, a little kissy emoji and everything, and then, like, I'm not kidding, like, one day, like, I got a selfie from her, and I was just, like, doing something else, and I, and I didn't message back, and then, like, I, like a couple hours later I went on my Snapchat and I saw that she had like deleted me off there and like blocked me on Tinder and I'm oh. like okay if you're gonna get that mad about me not responding to one snap then I'm glad I didn't meet you in person anyway oh my god <laughs> is that an overreaction I mean it kind of is right sometimes I mean, all you need is in quarantine is a little bit of attention that's no, I know, but but at least, you know, give me one or two chances. <laughs> yeah. Like a guy doesn't respond after 15 minutes and you're like, you're like, I guess he's just with some other girl. Because he is, because they're cheating, like I said. Well, yeah, I was on the, I was with, I was messaging other people on Tinder as well, but. <laughs> <laughs> he admits it, ladies. Hey, you know what? Quarantine's got us doing some strange things. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I've, if sleep, getting sleep is strange. So yeah, you're right. Yeah. No, I'm not. But I have, um, like, I, I know people who are on it. Or no, I don't think necessarily Tinder, but um, a friend of mine went on, like, a virtual, like, hike date thing. What? But I don't think it was through Tinder. And, like, she said it was kind of cool at first, but they, like, just zoomed and, like, walked through the Grand Canyon. It was, like, a video. Oh. So they were, like, 
talking as they were like quote unquote walking. Oh, so I'm, I'm big. I feel like it kind of opens up like these opportunities to like see things, but not necessarily like experience them because it's just like a video. So let me see if I get this right, Liz. So they were on like a like a Google like virtual tour, but it's like through the Grand Canyon while they were like in a chat. Yeah. So like imagine like I don't know how it worked, but like if like we're on Zoom right now mm -hmm. and they were like on Zoom, but they were also viewing a video of the Grand Canyon. Like a tour of the Grand Canyon. Hmm. That's romantic. I would, like who would even do that as a date in the first place but <laughs> i mean hey if that worked for them but i guess it didn't because <laughs> you said yeah, it, it started thing. out good at first <laughs> the amazing thing i just thought of this about like virtual dating and everything is like say you're on a first date with somebody or something and like you know like you need to fart or something like you can just mute it and and like it's so much less stressful because like think about it like if you're on a first date with somebody you have to fart or something and like you're like holding it in for like two hours you know to keep yo-yo on that thing but but now you can just kind of like mute it for a second just they can look at your silent satisfied face as you fart and then like unmute it and just go on with the date and they're none the wiser I don't know how many dates I've done that two or three times during this zoom call no I'm just, I'm just kidding I don't know. That was uh, that was a problem. I, I don't. I've only, I guess, experienced that once. But apparently, like, I don't know, my man. You've been you a pimp, so you on a lot more dates than I guess I am, and you know, farting a lot more apparently. Uh, not really. Not really. <laughs> if you get silent there, I'm going to start questioning you. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> expose yourself. I'm about to call you out every time. I'm like, hey, Andy, you haven't talked for like 30 seconds, dog. <laughs> out here tooting. <laughs> tooting. I, I ate at Subway today, so forgive me. What I tell you? What I tell you about Subway? I'm kidding. Terrible. I you know, I don't put it past you, you sicko. <laughs> but uh, you know, Liz, when you said a uh, virtual tour, like uh, or like you know, a hike, a virtual hike, I thought that they both went out on hikes, like individually, like in their own neighborhoods or something like that, and then like Facetime while they were doing it. And I was like, that's mm. kind of interesting, I guess. I like that too. Yeah. I think I, I guess like... it's so they, they see the same thing. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah. oh, look at that fake rock, that picture of a rock. <laughs> that's a nice boulder. Oh. But I mean, I guess the hike, like the actual hike and or walking around like your neighborhood and FaceTiming, I think I like that better because at least you're both like, you know, exercising. I yeah. Guess, you know? And outside. Yeah, you know. I mean, a hiking date is good because I think they've even, they have a joke about this on Seinfeld too, but like a hiking date, you don't have to look at the person. It's, you know, it's the next best thing to being alone, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I went on like a, I went on, I've been like going on sunset hikes a lot um, by my condo and I went with one of my teammates yesterday and um, we we're having like a pretty deep conversation and I realized like when I'm having like deep conversations, I always try to like have eye contact mm -hmm. and we're like huffing and puffing because this was like a new trail and it was like way steeper than I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and we're both like kind of dying. And I realized like we got to the top and like we were talking the whole time, but I didn't really look at her, which was like in my head, like I was like, oh, does that like is that awkward for her? Because it almost felt like awkward for me because usually it's like I, I'd be facing you like explaining something and it was like she was like trailing behind or not like trailing behind me but like I knew the way so like I was kind of leading the way. So it was just a different aspect of that I guess. Huh you know I didn't think about that like yeah you're probably not like walking side by side with someone. It's like driving too like when you're in a car with someone you're like you're not facing them when you're driving. Yeah. We're both facing forward. Oh, wow. You know, I didn't think about it like that. Hmm. I but think you know first dates are just awkward, like, regardless of what you're doing. You know, a lot of people <laughs> say that uh, food, food is really awkward. Like, I, like, what food is good first date food? I would say, like, you got to play it safe all the time. And so it's kind of mm -hmm. the same thing when you're hiking. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't want somebody judging my cardio. You know, <laughs> just like, why are you breathing so hard? We just got out of the car. <laughs> I know. 
because that's me i worry about that like i'll be walking i'm just like <sighs> and they're just like oh, good you like haven't even made it to the trail buddy and i'm just like <laughs> you know, just <sighs> get my steps in you know yeah <laughs> or what if you wore like a really light gray shirt and you're oh just like, mm -hmm. you have to think about these things you know you know mm -hmm. what head of the game because i'm super self-conscious about that like <laughs> if i start sweating like i'm all pissed and stuff like that i'm like hey yo don't look at me i swear to god i put, <laughs> uh, you know, put deodorant on please the best first date i'm not kidding you it's just go to a bar because it's loud there's tons of other people you're both drinking mm -hmm. like it takes all the awkwardness away it's great and the best thing about getting a drink is it's like getting coffee for a date it can last two minutes or 20 minutes or it can last like three hours it all depends on how well it's going but if it's going bad and you say you you know you finish your drink and you're like well it was nice talking to you and you get the hell out of there it's not that bad like you have an easy out you know true yeah. I can tell it. good point yeah well jumping back on to a little more uh, serious business then liz you are an athlete here at Cal Poly Pomona, correct? Yes. And what sport do you do? I run uh, track and cross country. Ooh, what events do you do in track as someone who used to be in track? Uh, I do uh, the 5K, Stupid Chase, and the 1500. I did the 10K once. Um, I don't know if I'd ever do it again. It was rough. <laughs> Super long. Um, and yeah, uh, cross country is just a standard 6K. So like running more of the like long distance stuff. Yeah, no, I was a sprinter. Uh, I could not do that. I'm literally exhausted just hearing you describe your events. But uh, how long have you been running track here at Cal Poly? I started when I was a freshman. So nice. this would have been my fourth season. Would have been. And so yeah. let's jump into that then. As an athlete, um, and just like how we covered earlier that the coaches, um, are all affected by this and we have a story um, out in the sports section in this week's issue describing like their experience dealing with this as a student athlete in the spring sports how does this affect you how's your experience been um how does it feel like having your season affected like this like can you talk about that um yeah so it was definitely a interesting year <sighs> to be on the cross country team and track team even before this, um, because we, for the first time, we had indoor track. Um, so I got to experience indoor track for the first time, and I competed twice, um, once in New Mexico, once in Michigan. So I had like a pre-season to the outdoor, like spring season of track mm -hmm. through that. So I did experience some races and then I was able to race one um, track meet at Long Beach State before everything got like shut down. So I experienced one normal outdoor race along with like most of my teammates. Um, so it was just sad because we had so many seniors like gearing up for the season. Like my coaches recruited like a lot of people like kind of like it built up to this year. Like there's a lot of momentum coming into this year. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of people who were like returning who had been ranked nationally or were all American. So um, it's just really sad that like of all years, it was this year mm -hmm. that everything happened. So um, it's been interesting because now I only like talk to my coaches through like phone calls and Zoom and I'm like super close with everyone in the athletic department. So I like dedicate a lot of time like after practice or before practice um I would just like roam around the halls like not like roam but like there's like this little section where all the like athletic department people have their offices and I'd, I'd walk through that like every single day mm -hmm. just to say hi and be like oh like how's it going like there's this one guy um shoot his name was Chris I can't remember his last name because I always called him just Chris <laughs> and I'd walk by his office every day mm -hmm. and I would say morning Chris and like I wouldn't even give him the time to like respond but that was just like our thing so I'm like there's so many little things like that that I was so used to mm -hmm. and like all of that's gone so it's just hard to adjust because like my whole life or like that was like four years have been so centered around my team and being on campus and like being in the gym and like lifting weights and like having the schedule and like it's completely gone 
And like, if we were still in season, our conference championship would have been next week. Oh man. So we were looking forward to that. We were looking forward to NCAAs. So it's just really sad. I can imagine. I get, that's devastating. You know, I can't imagine like what it's like, you know, not just for the coaches, but just for the athletes themselves, especially people in your position where this has been your, you know, your senior year, um, maybe it's your final season, um, just for people that like, just don't really get an ending like that, especially as someone like yourself, who's been doing this the last four years. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I can only imagine. So I'm, I'm really sorry that you guys whole just plans just got undercut by this situation. What have you been doing, like, in the meantime? How have you been, like, kind of, I guess, coping with this uh, change or just kind of dealing with it? You know, maybe some words for, like, how other athletes might, you know, be able to get through this because I can only imagine how difficult this is. Yeah, um, the first, like, couple weeks um, before, like, the stay at home, like, safe at home order, like, went into play and everything, um, we... There was like a group of us, we called ourselves the social distance track club. Um, so um, we got together and we ran um, for like two weeks, I'd say like, and we're still running like normal workouts and um, we tried doing it like off campus. Um, so that felt really normal and it just kind of felt like the summer because during the summer we have to train on our own anyways. Mm -hmm. So it felt like that and then that whole safe at home thing happened and then um some of my teammates parents were like yeah um you're not leaving the house <laughs> but since I live like on my own like no one's really telling me like not to leave the house to run mm -hmm. so I was still able to go out but um I definitely did hit a low um like a few weeks ago like I just had no energy to go outside and run so I didn't run for like two weeks maybe like 10 days to two weeks so I feel like now I'm like finally in the groove of it again but I wasn't sure like where to put like my focus and I feel like now I like kind of regain that focus mm -hmm. so I guess like to any athletes listening like you just need to like rediscover like your purpose and like my purpose was like completely like stripped away so like now that I've like kind of refocused and like I'm dialed in again like it's easier for me to like find the like excitement again in running is do you mind like speaking on that a little bit more like you said that you found your focus again which is awesome to hear so what can you kind of tell us about that uh, process and what that was like so you were in this slump for about 10 uh, days to you know two weeks yeah how did you, you climb out of it how did you overcome that um, so the biggest thing that like was like weighing me down was like um, the NCAA uh, granted an extra year of eligibility to all athletes affected by this like coronavirus shutdown. Mm -hmm. So I was given the option to stay another year at Cal Poly. Mm -hmm. So up until like a couple weeks ago, I was like kind of scrambling with um, my athletic advisor, my coach. Um, all these other people and like different department chairs trying to figure out like ways I could stay mm -hmm. and acquire either a minor or um, a, a double major or something that would like work towards units that would like keep me eligible and also like benefit me mm -hmm. and I was like doing all this research and I was like on Bronco Direct checking my DPR at Andy um, mm -hmm. all the time and like doing a bunch of stuff to like make sure it makes sense and all that was like really stressing me out mm -hmm. um so i think that's why i kind of fell into the slump but then i finally made this the, just the decision that staying wouldn't work and it took me a while to realize that mm -hmm. but now i'm like finally with peace with that decision so it was like really hard because like i'm like so close to my teammates and I've been team captain for the past three years. So it's just like really hard to like leave something that I've known so well. But I think that I finally have like in a weird way, like almost like closure because I made up my mind and I know I like, I have an idea of what I'm doing now. So like, I know that I'm not staying at Cal Poly so I could like focus on like what life after Cal Poly is like, instead of like trying to figure out um, 
how I'm going to make Cal Poly work. Very so, nice. So yeah. you, is it safe to say that it felt like you took a little bit of control back? Like a little bit of yeah, control back in the situation? Sure. Mm-hmm. Very nice thing. Because I can imagine, like, you know, I think it's very empowering. It's actually really inspiring. And, I, you know, we thank you for sharing that. Uh, because I can imagine, like, feeling that this was, you know, robbed from you. This opportunity was robbed from you. Uh, so I think it's, you know, it's a powerful statement for you to come back and to take some of that control back to be like, you know what, this is my decision. And right. you're, at, you're at peace with it, even if it means not being able to complete this season, you know, like, well, you know, I'm not going to stay another year, but that's my decision. It wasn't forced on you. You have to make that choice. So mm-hmm. I, I think that's awesome that you were able to come to terms and, you know, reclaim some of that power back. Yeah. All my coaches and everyone, they were like really helpful and they like wanted the best for me. So that's why like it took so long to like, finally figure out that there just wasn't a way that we could all like really agree on Mm -hmm. like I could have gotten like my teaching credential but I don't really have an interest in being a teacher Mm -hmm. so I was just kind of like shutting down different options just because I like for the first time I felt like I had the opportunity to like be selfish and like do something for me and like not my team so it was like weird like trying to wrap my head around that because for the past like three and a half years or four years like um I was so like team centered and this is like a big thing that's like not team centered so I'm not really used to that so everyone was like really supportive like everyone like all my coaches and everyone like so it's nice that I have them like in my corner and that's awesome and you mentioned earlier that um was it CSU that's providing the opportunity for athletes to get one more season? Uh, the NCAA, so okay. the national, yeah. All right, so and, and how, for any potential like student athletes that are listening to this, how would they go about that? Is that just something that they can just enroll into? They can just, you know, compete as if it was, you know, any other season? Or is there some process they have to go through in order to compete? I'm not, like, too sure, because usually um, – like this could get like super complicated, um, but any athlete can use a red shirt season. So like, instead of using, like I, if I had finished the track season, I would have done four years of cross country and four years of track. Mm-hmm. And every student athlete only gets four years of whatever season, mm-hmm. but you could complete it in five years or more. So like if you get injured or if you're not eligible, like with like you have to have a certain GPA and like a certain amount of units Mm -hmm. um so if you like fail your class in the fall you're not eligible in the spring if you don't have the right amount of units so then you'd have to take um like a a red shirt for that so this whole like coronavirus thing Mm -hmm. is kind of just like a a red shirt that like it's like an extra red shirt that the NCAA is giving everybody okay yeah all right well I, I think that's awesome though that you know they're even able to do that so it's at least something you know for people this has messed up their timeline I'm sure but at the very least you know especially for people that I'm sure like three years maybe not as seniors yet but like three years or less I'm you know this is nice for them to get another Mm -hmm. season I'm out of it so I think that at least having that option is good yeah Andy is there anything else you want to add while we have our two editors here I just think it's really great that they were both able to come on at the same time because we had planned this for before the shutdown and everything so it's really cool that everyone's still able to kind of connect this way and also I think that's awesome that Liz kind of took control of her own situation and really made the decision herself because a lot of the times in college you feel like a lot of these decisions are being forced on you like these math and science classes I have to take for no reason but it's like a lot of college is them like forcing you to do things that you really don't want to do so to hear about like especially a Cal Poly student really I don't want to say sticking it to him but really like <laughs> grabbing her own destiny and like just making her final semester her own even with all this going on is really inspiring i am going to petition to not take a lab i'm gonna see (laughs) you've inspired me yeah do it yeah honestly um i think it's really important because i think especially a lot of young people right now are are being faced with a lot of difficult situations you know Mm -hmm. like liz had to make a decision that was pretty much going to affect 
affect her the entirety of her next year, you know? And mm -hmm. it was really hard because obviously she was so attached to running and that was like her passion, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then there's also people who are out there who are worried about, you know, they were supposed to graduate this year and they have to find a job, you know? Um, so yeah, I think this is a difficult time for a lot of people. And so it's really nice to hear that there's positive things that are coming out of this too. I completely agree. Um, in fact, kind of sticking with that uh, optimistic thread, just briefly, is there anything that you guys can kind of recommend for all the Broncos that are listening? Like, what are some tips that you've been doing just to not only stay sane, but just kind of adjust to this new way of life? Um, well, since I have, like, I'm here, like, I'm living at my condo, and um, my roommates have kind of become, like, my quarantine buddies. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest, like, obviously, we're not supposed to, like, be going out and, like, seeing our bunch of group of friends, like, hanging out like we usually would. But if you have, like, even, like, your siblings um, in this time, we've definitely, my roommates and I have, like, hung out a lot more, and, like, we're all so busy. So now that we've all kind of had to stop everything or like just work from home, um, like we usually eat dinner together now and watch a movie together. So like we've gotten to get closer. So I guess that's another like optimistic thing. So um, I would say just like take advantage of like who you're with if you can. Yeah. So for me, uh, I have found that the most important thing for me to do, and honestly, I think this could work for a lot of people uh sometimes sometimes you know life is really crazy and you get caught up on like so many different things and so i think it's really important to take this time to just like take a step back and regroup you know what i mean like right now i'm back home and i'm back in the room where you know where i was where i was in high school where i was in middle school and where i was building all these ideas and you know just forming the person that i wanted to become and so when i went off to college you know i got involved in all these different things I have a job I'm an editor you know I'm also a student I'm a friend I'm we we all take on like all these different roles and so sometimes life just gets the best of you you know what I mean and so now that I'm being forced to just stay here to where all these ideas originated I started like I said I started reading again and I've taken a lot of time to just focus on the person that I want to be and I think it's done really well for me like um I just feel I I don't know if it's weird to say I just feel more alive you know and I feel more intact with myself and the person that I am um than I have in a really long time you know I'm not tired anymore you know and I feel I'm feeling good and I'm confident about what I'm doing and yeah I'm just feeling good and that's really awesome good. I feel you on that because like when this whole, when, when they, when Newsom announced that there was going to be the shutdown and I knew that like, I wasn't going to be in school or going to work anymore. I was like, wow, we, we all got to stay in touch. Like, you know, everybody like, Oh, I'm going to start all these group chats and everything. And here it is like a month later. And like, you know, I text people and stuff, but it's mostly just like a lot of like solitude in terms of like watching movies or reading or writing or just doing listening to music and like doing your own thing and I think at the end of this everyone is going to come out of this a lot hopefully a lot more healthy maybe not physically because we're all staying at home snacking but at least mentally oh yeah that quarantine 15 but yeah I totally agree with that I honestly think that we're all kind of being given the opportunity to get to get to know ourselves again you yeah know? Well, because the thing is, is this is dragging on and on and on. And uh, I just found out that like my, the summer class I was going to take is not happening anymore. So basically I looked at it as I was like, well, you've basically been gifted. You know, I'd rather, gifted is a strong word, but like, I'd, I'd rather life be normal and the coronavirus not be happening than this. But like, I've basically been gifted like from mid-March till whenever the, school semester starts again in the fall if it starts and I'm like I've got to take creative advantage of this if I can you know because yeah. I, I said to myself because uh, anybody who knows me knows I want to be a screenwriter and a director and I thought to myself I'm like if I don't come out of this having done something creative then I must not want it that bad 
Yeah. 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 I totally agree. And you know, I think, I think a lot of good things are going to come out of this quarantine. You know, I think the fact that everybody's being forced to just like sit here and kind of just like explore, explore your own creativity and push your own boundaries by yourself is going to do some really good. And I don't know what it's going to be exactly. You know, I don't know if it's going to be like new technology, new innovations. Um, but I think good things are coming. I completely agree. I, especially with what both of you are saying, like as a creative person, I was going a million miles an hour with school and work and just having no time. I barely had time to sleep. So just like you said, Dale, this has just been a, it's been a reset. It's been a hard reset and you don't get many of those in life. And just like you said, this is an opportunity, or at least you can look at it this way. You can make it this way. Um, it doesn't have to just be solitary confinement. You can use this as an opportunity to reflect, like you said, find yourself, know yourself a little bit more. And I've been trying to take advantage of that. And just like you've been doing, Andy, like uh, I told myself I need to be working on something. I need to do something creative coming out of this or else like I, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve to, you know, become an actor or a writer or a director someday if I don't take advantage of this creative opportunity right now. And so that's what I've been doing. Um, so you guys are completely right. I've been just kind of hunkering down and doing a lot more writing. I've been doing a lot more concept and like research stuff to help with like develop stories. Um, it, it's just been great, honestly. Like it was really rough in the beginning, just adjusting this new way of life. I'm a very social person too. So not being able to go out sucks, but taking advantage of this moment to be like, you know what? I can finally do all those things I've been putting off for like the last year. You know, yeah. because I've been so busy and overwhelmed with work and school and just staying afloat that I didn't have a time to enjoy things. Uh, you know, I'm catching up on all these movies uh, that I missed out on. You know, I have time to actually read. Like you're saying, you know, like I ordered a book the other day and I'm like, I can finally <laughs> crack open like a book and read. And so it's just been a really awesome opportunity uh, to, or at least I've made the effort to make it an awesome opportunity to actually find myself creatively again and get back into like what I love. So I think that's, that's awesome that you guys are doing that as well. I wonder yeah. if I started like a quarantine book club or something, because I'm sure that that would totally do something right now. I think that'd be great, honestly. We could, we could totally start one. You I was what? actually, I was actually thinking about that the other day because I just finished reading a book. It was actually really good. And after I finished it, my mind was blown and I was like, dude, this is why, this is why I should never stop reading. You know what I mean? But watch, just watch. Once everything goes back to normal, I'm going to be like reading. Nope. Because I don't have time. <laughs> you know what I mean? But for now, you know, like right now I'm in a really weird in between time because I ordered a book off Amazon, but shipping is pushed back. Like, I don't know how many days. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I'm just waiting for it to come in, but I'm hitting Russian literature next. So if Ooh. anybody wants to join my book club on and read Anna Karenina with me, let me know. <laughs> yeah. What was the book that you finished? Um, it's called um, Eleanor Oliphant is Totally Fine. So it's kind of, it's, it's a newer book. It's not, it's, I didn't want to hit anything classic yet. I had to, you know, warm up a little bit, but yeah, I'm excited. I've never read Tolstoy. If you guys Ooh. are into that kind of thing. I am into Tolstoy. That's dope. Okay, cool. I, uh, I just read, um, a novella called who goes there it's from 1938 and it's a horror story and it's the if anybody's ever heard of the thing with kurt russell that horror movie uh from the 80s uh it's a fantastic movie and everyone should see it but um it's the yeah it's the 30 it's the 1938 story that it was based off of and it's like 120 pages long and i finished it in like an hour and a half and it was like I was like, oh my God, this is like the greatest thing I've ever read. It's so good. Like I, like I, cause you know, you kind of, that movie is so good that you're not sure if it's gonna, if the source material could possibly live up to it, but then you read it and you're like, oh my God. So I've just been reading tons here. You, you get, I'll show you guys the, no one listening to this can see this, but everyone will hear their reactions. This is my um, like collection. Of wow. Oh, wow. That is comics wow. and books and all this stuff that I still have. And then here's all my movies. Oh, my God. Gosh. Here's oh. all my, like, movies. Yeah, this this is where I'm sitting right now, in case you guys can't see. This is my, <laughs> this is my room. That, is that your, oh, that's your room. Okay, yeah. Yeah, this is my room. I'll try to describe it for, like, the people listening. So, basically, Andy's room, on one wall, he has different boxes i think it was uh, what 
eight. What about eight boxes? Uh, and oh, it's are, more than eight. Oh, there's it's, more than eight. So it's just yeah. stacks of boxes, um, and those are all full of books. You said on that side. Yeah, comic books and books and graphic novels and all that kind of good stuff. Awesome. And then on the other side, he has this like basically an entire wall, um, just to the brim, just stocked to the brim with different uh films. Are those all films? Yeah, it's all movies and some TV. Dang. Oh like the entire wall is taken up by that. And then he has like all pl- plastered like all around the room, these just just super dope and, and kind of kick ass like old film posters of like all these classics like The Exorcist and Godzilla. I'm trying to see like what else he has there. I have like Dawn of the Dead here and then um this is like one of my favorites is the c- classic Superman. This oh is actually God. from 1978. That's so dope. Yeah. Yes. So this, this, that's what I've been doing. In case anybody wants to know, I've been sealed in this room for a month, just reading and watching movies. Hey, you know what? That seems like the best place to be for this. Yeah. That's your awesome, juices man. Flowing. It really what? does. It really, it really gets your juices flowing. Yeah. I mean, basically when I write, it's from like 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock at night till like four in the morning. And I'm doing nothing but writing and watching horror movies and eating Cheez-Its <laughs> every night. Well, I'm glad you're creative in that space because, you know, if you can't be in there, I don't know where the hell else you're supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, That's one awesome. time I, I, I was showing my friend, I, w- I had a, like my birthday party at my house and I was showing my, uh, my friends this room. This is the first time they had ever seen it. And she lo- kind of like looks around and she's kind of in shock and she goes like, what do you do when you bring a girl in here? Like, and I go like this, I look at, like I held for a beat and I looked at her, I go, gotta tell you, it doesn't come up that often. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, I said to the, uh, my favorite thing is that anytime anybody asks me about it, I always say, well, you know, if we're at the point where the girl is gonna come in my room anyway, she probably knows me well enough to know what she's getting into. <laughs> Right, like it shouldn't be a surprise. Yeah, she's not going to be shocked that she just walked into like a video store. She's like, oh my god, Andy, do you like films? Yeah. (laughs) Just a little bit, just a little bit. (laughs) I'm I'm kind of a novice, you could say. Yeah. Your room does scream blockbuster a little bit. Oh, it does? Yeah. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. That's kind of what I'm going for. (laughs) (laughs) All right, well... With that, I think we're going to be uh, approaching the end. Um, while we still have you guys, again, thank you so much for joining us. But is there anything else you want to add to the people out there for anybody that's listening? Um, definitely just keep reading the Polly Post. We have two more issues um, left in this year, and then we'll be back at it again in the fall. Um, but it helps when students support students. That's right. And we are a student ran uh, paper, everybody. We give you the student's perspective on things. Uh, this show wouldn't happen without the Poly Post. So if you like this show, please support the paper that goes with it. Um, Daniela, anything else you want to add? Uh, I guess I just want to encourage everybody to stay safe. You know, um, it's a difficult time, but we're all in this together. And so I think that's the beauty of it. Couldn't have said it better myself. And on that note, uh, we're going to go ahead and finish this up. Thank you guys so much again for listening to another episode of The Polypod. Uh, We're going to try to pump out another episode next week. Um, Not sure if we're going to have a guest on. That's, I guess, me and Andy will figure that out later, uh, just like everything else going on with this. Yeah. Uh, But anything else you want to add, my man? Nothing. Just thanks, everybody, for continuing to uh, listen. And we're going to try and get as many episodes out to you as we can. That's right. And thank you so much again to our guests, Daniela and Elizabeth. Thank you guys so much for joining us and being here. We really appreciate it. And with that, Broncos, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.